All right, hit us for the first one, mate. What have we got? I love these big spinnerbaits. They're just so user-friendly and forgiving in the heavy cover, and, and they just work, and they constantly work and continue to work. And they're adaptable. Nothing for me to be efficient with the same spinnerbait and change blades on it two or three times. Some of the, you can buy the naked mag draft plastics and put real good quality plastics on the back, but they'd be my number one, and I like the natural colours or red and black or black and purples. They go really well in the oven. It's funny, this year, the start of this year, they, they, everything was on white, especially the golden are on white spinnerbaits, but that spinnerbait, particularly for beginners, you can just throw them out, let them helicopter to the bottom and just roll them back in. You don't have to be any more imaginative than that sometimes, but it just does the job. They're just reliable. And reasonably snag resistant and not too hard on the pocket compared to some other cod lures. Yeah, either. yeah, yeah. The beauty of that too is you're not relying on American or Japanese or you know, some fancy imported stuff. Probably the best quality spinnerbaits in the world. A lot of them are Australian made and Australian companies. Mm, mm. But what like a couple of the guys... Secret Creek and Obsession and Prime, well, they, they make really good quality spinnerbaits. These are guys that you can actually talk to, either give them a call or talk to them on Facebook or message, and they'll make you spinnerbaits to auto. Like if you want different colours or bigger configurations or different things, that's the beauty of the local product. They're really good and they're really well yeah. made. I've had probably a dozen cotter put on the one spinnerbait and they're still held together. They're just really good quality. Mm. And the guys that are making them are the ones that use them. And I'd say all the operators that I work with that make them have started out to make them for themselves and thought, well, you know, to try and cover my cost and not make a million dollars, I'll start to make some and sell them. And they're really good guys and they do a really good job. So they're particularly made hmm. for our fish, which is great. Give us a little bit of an idea of what one of your spinnerbaits would look like. Colorado blades or willow blades? Mostly the main blade will be a, a hammered willow blade and either gold or copper. For some reason, they just go really well there. And two ounce lead on it with a 4060 hook and a stinger hook on the back of that. And like I said, the majority of the time I'll use a purple and black or red and black and never be scared to vary it up a bit and change it a little bit. Uh, the second blade is a little Colorado. But these things, you fish the right areas with them, particularly those big drop-offs and rock ledges that I spoke about. You cast these things out and make sure you have your, gear, your reel in gear and just keep the line taut, just keep weight on it. These blades are five or six inches long. You can feel them actually vibrate through the line on the drop. The amount of times you get hit on the drop, and it doesn't matter how many times it happens to so you, give you a heart attack. <laughs> if you haven't got your reel in gear, you can have the biggest bird's nest, the biggest mess you've ever had, but yeah. it's a great way to fish. And, and even this year, I've changed a little bit with that still use those big configurations of blades and hooks, but then go lighter head weight and throw them right into the snag so they'll helicopter down. And when I do that, I'll go back to the Colorado. So they drop slower and you can work them really slow and you climb over logs and rocks and bumps. Mm. And you, yep. and the crawl, them, crawl them right through, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, mate, so that's number one. That's the spinnerbait. What's lure choice number two? Uh, surface lures, there's just a certain thing about catching cod on a surface lure that the noise that it makes and the stuff it does is just a bit of it and it drive you mad. So I like the mega pompadours or the codgers in a dark colour. Codgers are a great lure and every single time I use them, I change them up. I take the rear treble off and I'll change them to either a single or double assist hook and it increases your hookup rate, honestly, probably five or tenfold. Surface lure fishing for cod, on average, you probably hook one in four or five. They're just not that accurate at hitting the lures, or they'll bump them or swipe at it or check it out first. And they'll often come back. So that, like, if you get a bit of a look, you keep casting in there. It's one of the only lures for some reason. They'll come back and have another go at it without hesitation. But with the assist hooks on the back, the hookup rate's amazing. You often hook them outside the mouth or under the chin and all that sort of thing. But your hookup rate improves so much. It's amazing. And with the pompadours, they've got the blade. Up spin. Any lure's got a spinning blade on the back. I use a solid line to go to that assist hook and use a, just a single assist on those. So if I make my own up and just put a bit of shrink wrap along the whole length so you haven't got a bit of cord there, get wrapped up in a little propeller at the back. Particularly in the rivers and stuff, they're amazing. The hookup rate's so much better. Very good. All right, so when and where would you fish those? I mean, you've given us a pretty good idea with the spinner bait. And they're something you can use any time of the day, really. But the surface lures, mate, are they more of a early morning, late afternoon thing? They certainly work better in low light, but that doesn't necessarily mean dark and it doesn't necessarily mean morning and night. That, that obviously, there's a, that's a prime time, but if I'm sitting here today and it's a, the temperature hasn't cracked 20 degrees and it hasn't stopped raining all day and hasn't seen the sun, it's a perfect day to just throw. You can throw surface all day. Fish relax more when they've got that little bit of cloud cover and, and even a little bit of ripple on the water. Yeah, that broken surface, yeah. Yeah, it seems really nice to throw a surface lure on absolutely glassed out conditions. 
But really, the fish are so switched on in those conditions, they really are hard to catch. You don't want it absolutely glassed out. You want that air moving but not windy and just a little bit of move on the surface. And you can still hear your surface sort of you know, flopping away doing its thing. That's absolutely perfect if you can get that. And that can often be limited to a bright, clear day. But on a cloudy day, you don't have to throw them all day. Don't, don't be scared to. Let's move on to lure choice number three. Yep, I'm really hooked on these things, especially the last 12 months, is the gigantral. These things just work so well. I mean, you can make them do acrobatics in the water. You can just by the different speed of a crank of the head or you can get them to turn back on themselves and do crazy things and fish just find them irresistible. I love swimbait fishing and glide back fishing now. I've really got into it. There's some really expensive, really nice things that work well, but these gigantals are big and bulky and they seem to do the job really well and they're, yeah, they're expensive enough that they're accessible. You can buy them pretty much anywhere and they're a great thing to throw around. Yeah, yeah. So, mate, when would you fish those? Yeah, what conditions would convince you this is a swim bait day? I'm going to give the swim bait a crack first. Yeah, often it's, a, well, always it's a confidence thing, but often you get a, I don't know what it is, you get a bit of a feeling, but I love to catch fish on the surface. So, if I possibly can, that's my favourite way. I just love to do that for the action. The first thing, I'll throw surface around for a while, and if it's really dead, I'll then go to those big swim bits, but unweighted. I don't put a chin weight on those early in the day. If it's a bright day and the sun starts to come up, and you've got to move away from traffic and stuff like that. There's always exceptions, obviously, but then I'll go to the inner baits or put a little chin weight on those swim baits and get them down as well and work those away from the open banks and go back into the ledges and the cover. Obviously, if I'm fishing that really light, spindly, drowned timber, standing timber, you don't throw too many really expensive jackals in there. I'll throw spinner baits in there. It's not because they don't work as well. It's just because I don't want to throw eighty dollars off the end of the rod all the time. But when you're working those swim baits, mate, I know there's lots of different ways you can work them. You know, most commonly, how would you start out? Early in the day, I'll fish right up into the shallows. Like you'd be stunned where these really big fish are. They'll be in well under a meter of water. So you get them out in the shallows, and it's really just cast and slow roll. So on the big swim baits, I just really slow roll. And about every third crank of the handle, I'll just get one fast crank and then just dead stop it and just let it just sit there. And what they do is, if you ever look at it in a a pool or a bath or anything, you give it that one quick crank of the handle, they'll virtually shoot sideways and turn. You can almost make them turn completely back on themselves. Often when the fish will hit it, so you give it a real quick hit and then just absolutely dead stick it and the cod just inhale them. They don't muck around with them. It's like, well, it's getting away. Hang on. It just stopped and it's done. That's a reaction thing. You can (laughs) often... Fish yielding, and particularly with spinnerbaits and stuff, and the water's clear, and you'll see fish behind your lure a, a lot, a hell of a lot. It can get really frustrating because it's so clear. And what everyone tends to do straight away is slow things down. And a lot of people you talk to say, yeah, you've got to fish really slow. You get out there and fish yielding and crank spinnerbaits, let them drop right to the bottom on those ledges and crank them ridiculously fast. And I'm not talking about like trying to catch a mackerel or anything, but fast, like decent crank of the handle. And you get that real reaction strike. There's no mucking around. There's no follow. They just hammer them. And you'll be really stunned how fast they'll come out and hit them. They mightn't go fast for long, but they'll certainly go fast in a short burst and really surprise you. So if you have a slack day, just start to crank yep. it up a little bit. Yep. I'm not saying go fast all the time, but just try going a bit faster, a bit slower. It's, it's just it's fishing, yeah. All right, Steve, mate, we've done three lures. I'm going to let you have this extra one now. So yep. hit us with your fourth lure, mate. Big plastics, like really big plastics just on their own. Um, yeah, either rig normally or rig weedless. And some of the ones that are already pre-rigged, like the big mag drafts and stuff, they've been a real game changer in the last few years and just work really, really well. They're a great thing. And again, so simple to use. You can virtually just throw them out and just slow roll them back in. And I don't know whether it's, it's probably a little... It, but it's just something and you know the next thing will probably take over for the, for the time being there's not a lot of people well there's a few starting to throw them now but not a hell of a lot they don't see a lot of them but they look real you look at a spinnerbait and say what's that imitating and it's looking for reaction bites in the light and the vibration and refraction yeah but when you see these big plastic or glide baits and stuff the satisfaction of catching a fish on them it's like you're really fooling this fish into thinking that's a real fish and they look so lifelike that they you know, mm. they, they work really well yeah and you, it doesn't have to be those really expensive ones you can get some big plastics at a reasonable price and rig them up on a weedless hook or even a normal hook and they just work really well i think the other thing about plastics of course is you know they're quiet so they've got their own vibration it's a different vibration than you get from a spinner bait or a hard body or a swim bait or anything else but they've got no rattles they've got no noise and they tend to be fairly natural in the way they swim and 
they look very natural. They look like a real bait fish. I think that's the, the big attraction of them. But as you say, the cod probably don't see as many of them as they do other lures. Yeah, and if the fish give them a bit of a bump, they're not scared to come back and have another touch at them because they feel mm, soft mm. and they feel so much more natural. They sort of say, oh, hang on, that wasn't that bad. I'll have another go at it, mate. And you often yeah, hook right. them up again. Like you can really slow roll, and the thing is just continue to slow roll. If you slow roll those big plastics, the big magras or something, gives them a little tap on the tail, and you continue that roll. So often they'll come back and have another go at it. It's really good.